Hello, Rashmita. This is Samya here. Hi, Rashmita, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. We'll wait for others to join. Yeah, sure.
Hi, Brinda. This is Aumia. Hi, this is Aumia. Hi, Gita. We we'll wait for a few minutes, two, three more sure. minutes. More people should join. Sure, sure. Hi, hi. All of you sitting in Ali's house, eh? Doing what? Guy was very disappointed. I don't know why you said you're tired. I just kept closing my
Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we would uh, like to get started. Maybe I would request the panelists to share with you on that is possible. And I would, uh, uh, I would like to have a couple of minutes to introduce the panelists to the attendees. Uh, we are happy to have uh, three panelists today. Rasmita, Geeta, and Brenda. Rasmita has a lot of experience in legal consulting. And uh, Geeta, as uh, some of you may know already, is a <coughs> leader from Domlur Ward, BNP worker and leader from Domlur Ward, and has uh, some ground experience in working on issues of domestic violence, especially during the pandemic. We are also happy to have uh, Brenda Adige with us, who is a mentor to Global Concerns India and our partner in adopt a slum and various other campaign initiatives uh, i would like to hand over to geeta if your uh, mic and setup is working yes geeta, yes i'm here thank you let's get started thanks yeah thank you samya for the introduction hi can i see abrinda hello brinda can you switch on your audio and video yeah hi hi video yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi to everybody. Hello. Hi, Hi, Brinda. Hi, Rashmita. Hi. Yeah. So let's get started. Uh, see, as uh, Soumya has already introduced, uh, let me talk about some of the word, uh, work done by uh, uh, Brinda. So welcome, Brinda. Uh, Brinda is a very well-known like a social activist, and uh, she has been working from past 25, 30 years. And uh, she has like uh, instrumental in pioneering the Makkala Sahayawani. That's what like uh, our topic we are like uh, today, women and child safety are going to talk about. And uh, her helpline is like uh, still available. And uh, she headed this unit for a very long time. Hello, Brinda. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Rashmita, she is uh, like um, in a legal consulting and she has worked in uh, various... Um, organizations in corp in corporates and workplace harassment, sexual harassment, child abuse cases, and so on. So as we all know, the issue is like women's safety. And we all know, we've been hearing uh, so much about uh, the news and everything. Uh, we hear about newspaper, TV, social media, and everything about a lot of sexual harassment, rape, uh, gang rapes, mob lynching, and all those things. These are very common. Everybody is very aware about it. But we're talking about like today, safety, women's safety at home. Are they safe? So many of us like no, uh, want to uh, burst a lot of myth today. I want to know from Brinda. The first question goes to Brinda. We want to know. Many of us are not uh, only aware about like just hitting, a physical violence is an abuse. But what are the kinds of abuse, Brinda? Um I'm sure all of us have in some form or the other experienced most of these kind of abuse, it, but because of our culture and our upbringing, very often we do not want to recognize it or talk about it loudly. Most often that women would not be able to recognize and they also don't think that it is a complaint that they must make is the emotional and psychological abuse. Emotional and psychological is anything from using bad language, uh, not eating the food that has been cooked, not sleeping in the same room, not talking to the person. So all of this fall within the purview of emotional and psychological. But we have a Domestic Violence Act, which also talks about sexual economic violence. So these are the various kinds of violence that is there. And often women do not recognize it because Nobody has told them that this is a crime, that this is a violation. If your husband doesn't talk to you, you must do everything in your power so that he comes back and talks to you. Now, you as a wife can't turn your face and say, I won't talk to you. There's nothing that you can do something like that. But if your husband does it and he continuously does this, 
the law is very clear that that is a abuse it is violence so the law particularly talks about physical violence talks about psychological violence sexual violence emotional violence and of course economic violence so these are the five uh, that have been determined by law and many of you would not want to recognize it also because women are always asked to adjust ourselves so these are issues that we need to start unlearning to tell ourselves that this today is a crime and because of this women across strata it's not just women living in the slums not just women who are illiterate or women who are in uh, the villages but women across strata suffer various forms of domestic violence and it is important for us to unlearn and start talking about it because today research and statistics show that the mental violence the psychological and emotional is very high people getting into depression and a large number of them suffering from bipolar and other associated mental illness okay okay brinda see he i had uh, i divide some questions like you no know, uh, we go to before pandemic era because in the lockdown we have lot of cases it has double triple and uh, many of us came to know and got involved also but as like i want to take up some questions and understanding normally i want to take you people be, uh, before pandemic era and you can just uh, explain us like what you have to uh, you have done at that point i know some of the work can rasmita yeah can rasmita explain like in the corporate worlds you work then like, uh, uh, usually we think like uh, financially like uh, less able people they face a lot but uh, people who are working and uh, well socio economic levels also what kind of uh, abuse kind of thing you faced and uh, explain with my example uh, see i i would like to come to the point like uh, when we are talking about any violence against women it happens yeah. uh, as as we as i have to go to the topic what you have mentioned that stay home stay safe or we are talking about even the official officers across the country or if you take even a global scenario there's a lot of violence happens uh, in the workplace and uh, i have been receiving a lot of complain that uh, in most of the cases putting somebody if it, there is a female working and he is supposed to pack up by 7 pm and then you suddenly get a call from your boss no you have to stay till 8 or maybe late night don't mind and just wait for a while and i'll go and drop you right or you may find out that uh, a project where the result is not coming up to the standard and then that particular lead who is a female is also facing uh, you know a lot of harassment in terms of um, abusive language in terms yeah. of uh, kind of you know lewd remarks also you can say which yeah. uh, at times we feel like okay maybe the person is fl- you know kind of flitting but at the same time it's not actually flitting and uh, he's trying to use you so the moment you feel that you have been used for somebody's vested interest mm. uh, you have to recognize then and there that it is a, it is a violence right and okay. most of the companies that i work with have uh, like as per the government of india as you know this in mm. circular and we have seen that uh, it's a visakha act is in place and after the you know 2013 the nirbhaya case they make it sure they have made it sure that you know in every company with minimum 10 persons this guideline should be there on the wall and people should abide by it okay so either in the form of a verbal you know thing or kind of in a passing comment or uh, in the form of physical abuse or uh, you, you can also you know find out in the form of inappropriate touch where you feel you are not comfortable to take it further so what you can basically do is to bring it to the notice of the you know organization and every organization has to have a sale to deal with it which in most i mean to to my surprise there are organizations which has uh, forget about having 10 employees where they should be implemented but there are organizations where you'll find out the total employee strength is not less than even 150 and 200 but there is no ic sale there is no internal committee sale so that is quite surprising for me to find out that if there is no internal committee internal committee to take it further how would we go ahead with that and who whom who is the person to you know uh, take this uh, case forward 
so it is the internal committee who has to work with an external lawyer and finding out that all the things are in place and any and this has to be given a proper training to the people who are involved who are working there and on a regular basis have to be you know i mean you know find out their up to date knowledge about what the law says and how how should we go about it because yeah. a post uh, uh, after covid we have seen there is a alarming rate this is increasing and if you remember if you are keeping track of the news and whatever the things are happening around the country yeah. you'll find out that 92000 calls has been received which is not a joke yes. only in the month of april 92 yes, to 95000 that time in front of me yes so yeah. this is this is really going to be very shocking that women do not recognize or even if they recognize it as brinda ma'am has already said that it is really the socio cultural you know conditions with us that we do not like to go forward and put up a complaint to yeah. find out that if we can be if we can take help from them right yeah thank you thank you rashmita and uh, the same in the same line a question i would like to pass uh, brinda uh that uh, when the working women have a lot of challenges to fight outside like men like when she come home what kind of support she is expecting and how different the scenario at home like how much safe she is like um i think it this uh, house is the most safest place has now through this pandemic we got to know that it's certainly not the safest place as women who are working outside and women also working not going out and working but working inside you always expect somebody to be part of this journey of yours it can be your husband it can be your partner your boyfriend whoever it is to take charge and to the chores in the house because it is not that the chores have to be done only by a by a woman by a female if this person is going out and coming back a home from work a cup of coffee but if you look now again and again the patriarchal system that we are conditioned with does not allow many times even women to ask for that cup of coffee from their husband yeah. because they are looked down as bad women hmm. they are looked down as women who are incapable they are looked down as women whose mothers didn't bring them up as good women so what is the expectation of women share in whatever is the household job because if man is also going out to work the woman is also going out to work and both of you come back home it is but fair and right that household jobs and chores are taken care of together maybe somebody is very good in cooking so you take over cooking and someone is not so good in cooking even if it is that woman you cannot expect to say you are a woman you need to cook because these are the uh, uh, attitudes conditioning that all of us have been brought up with especially as girls so when we are talking of the pandemic this got the real hitting because here we had this woman who's at home the man is also at home but for some reason his job on the computer is more important than her job on the computer and both of them were doing the same things every time we've handled so many cases from the village and the slum to you know people uh, having webinar meetings with 80 90 uh, people and uh, some of the cases where this husband actually walks past and says oh i didn't know that your assistant manager is a young handsome fellow are so suspicions even while she is at home not able to go out anywhere and then wants the phone to be put on loudspeaker he does not want to have the have her, her um, password to that phone so these are the kind of cases that we've been looking at and handling how does how does somebody handle a case like this what do you do to counsel them so it is the importance that boys and girls are taught any job in the house is not is not a qualification only for a ma- woman to do it talking is about equality else. yes because yeah. the pandemic actually deepened these inequalities hmm. okay i'll go back one more question in uh, like a before pandemic era this is i have some data from nfhs that is national yeah. family health survey uh, this is before pandemic days uh, when they have done survey they have come to know 99% of the women they uh, told they are suffering 
and their suffering it is in a uh, lot of things like an ego uh, a lot of st social stigmas about patriarchy and all those things and only 1% women they reported only 1% they reported so the reason can be like it is many times they have noted i ha i have a data they have noted it is a what kind of uh, data it shows is like they have uh, learned to live with it it is my destiny and nobody will listen to me where can i go and there are a lot of other social stigma so one thing is so why people are not talking uh, openly about it so when we do more hush hush like nobody want to talk about it only in pandemic when uh, uh, numbers have like no skyrocketed then we all got notice otherwise people like us many people like who are you people are working in that line i got very late into it and it was so shocking to see the uh, cases and numbers so how like why people are not talking about what is stopping them you and me we are the culprits because we would never want to believe and trust this woman who comes and gives a complaint or even talks about it casually I mean, there are uh, sentences or statements that we make saying you're a manager of this company and uh, your husband beats you that's enough she's not going to talk about it again or why did he beat you how can i ask such a question what wrong you have done yeah. what wrong have you done but more than what wrong have you done why did he beat you why did because he beat the first question i ask why did he beat you so if i give you a reason are you now going to explain to me and actually justify and say because of a b c d you got beaten so sad but this is our attitude and that is why women are not coming forward and today in this age and time even though we have social media where we want to post everything very rarely you will have women who will come and post saying that this is what my husband did or my partner did and this is because i am going to be humiliated and insulted by my own friends and those who may be women and probably men but often by women themselves because we need to show this picture to the whole world that i am a good woman my husband is good the responsibility has been placed on women to uphold the prestige and the respect of this family the husband can do anything under the sun but you the woman is to be doing all the right things so that he becomes a good man I mean, that is why we got you married to him na that you will change right. media also portray, portrays the same thing and that is why we need to ask ourselves is this messaging correct yeah you mean to say if she is more socially accepted if the more help from the family and friends they encourage her to talk about it we all should help the more campaigns we need and uh, we we should make it not a social stigma or to tag her a bad woman or something we have to encourage and so even after complaining uh, whether she can go for a counseling or a police or whatever to solve the thing after that also if she should not be tagged as a uh, she should live with a dignity after that also so that is what is we have to do yeah you are adding something one thing is let's not tell the woman has to go for counseling okay the minute you say the woman has to go for counseling why is it this we assume that the man is okay the man doesn't require counseling Hmm. we know we know that men also suffer depression yeah. we know that men men have also got locked in this entire patriarchy where he probably cannot show his own weaknesses he can't hmm. cry he can't uh, tell that you know I, he cares for somebody hmm. so when we talk of counseling both will have to go for counseling okay there is no way that it's only the woman okay. but we need to understand that the woman is burdened more because from a young age she has hmm. been asked to bottle up everything mm -hmm. and it weighs down on her for years together just imagine 20 25 years you've never raised your voice against your husband every time he hits and screams and shouts at you you may sulk for 10 minutes 15 minutes in the toilet but you have to come back and you will do your chores and smilingly serve food for him and yes you will have to also have sex with him if he chooses to without ever saying no don't touch me don't come near me can you imagine the mental trauma this woman goes through 
irrespective of her economic independence. And that is why we need to say, whatever you're going through, talk to me, it's okay. And at any point of time, it's not that only you have to go for counseling. You need, because you need to strengthen yourself, but your husband, absolutely, your boyfriend and partner, absolutely has to care. Yeah, whoever, even if a family, husband's family or somebody in-laws, if the problem is with them, everybody has to go and resolve the matter. And if it is serious, then yes, the police will also have to be called. Okay, so my uh, next question is to uh, Rasmita. Rasmita, I want to add anything. What's stopping her, even in a legal way? Uh, you have, uh, you see anything uh, is holding her back to talk about it? In a legal way, you want to add anything? What Brinda has told you, want to add anything? I think your video is... Rasmita, you can get your yes. video on. Are you not able to see? Okay. Uh, we'll can move to the next me? question. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, yes. I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. because there is thunder power, you know, severe thunder outside and there is frequent power cut and all that. That's why I was a little bit offline. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so the, from the very practical point of view, I'll tell you, hmm. it's not like that most women do not recognize. They, hmm. they feel, uh, they, they recognize that they're going through trauma. Hmm. That is a problem. Yes. When it comes to taking the legal help, then mm. first make the call to either to the friend or they themselves will call. I have been receiving a lot of calls. Mm. But when it comes to taking them or offering the help, I have mm. seen most of them back out. Why do they back out? Yeah. A very mm. recent case, as I was, uh, I, I will bring it to picture without naming the people and anybody. Uh, it's the call between, it, it's a domestic violence because the mom said that, uh, you know, I have been tortured mentally, physically attacked by my son. Where do I go? I've been working all my life. I lost my husband and I built up this house, but I have been subjected to all these things. Now, I don't no, want to take it's any a mother. Chance, right? I don't okay. want to take any chance. I, I wanted to go ahead filing a case but I don't want to go to the police station because right now is the COVID time where do I go I might catch the COVID so I said what do you want me to do if you don't come out or you don't go ahead with filing a complaint and your life is being challenged I mean you are feel that you are feeling that it, your life is threatened any okay. point of time because you are alone and mm -hmm. your son may do anything so that's it nobody can give any guarantee right and then, I don't know, I tried to reach her, I found her phone switched up. I, okay. I sent the person, I found it is locked. There are okay. many cases also. A lady who is completely shattered, hmm. her husband is having affairs, hmm. comes home, he's completely drunk. There are grown up children who, are, hmm. who have uh, spoken to their dad that this is not the right thing, what you are doing with the family. Because children have grown up, have appeared the CBC examination, 10th class, in different different schools but they see the home atmosphere is very pathetic they hmm. came they have spoken to me i being a technology lawyer even though i handle a lot of cases in workplace offer a lot of training and tell them this is where you have to go and uh, my other friend who is actually into this litigation and domestic violence and goes ahead filing the case and represent the victim in the court we spoke to the lady she came we have given her all the guidance Still, being an educated person, we have no news. I try to reach out to find out whether they are safe. That is my first primary concern as a legal person to go that extra mile to find out when whosoever has called me if they are safe or not. But still, they say, okay, we'll come back to you. If there is a financial trouble, I'll let me connect you to the people. Let me also offer some financial benefit. Mm. Also not charge the money from you, but I can always help you out in these circumstances. But we, I should hear you saying that, okay, let us go and file a complaint. Okay. And I'm, I still fail to understand that what is that stopping you not being able to come out? Is it the social, you know, system? Yeah. Is it yeah. somebody in the family? You will find out there is a, when we talk about domestic violence, it's not only, let me also bring to picture, it's not only the women who are always at the, you know, side of the, you, you can say that they are the victim. There are also many uh, people where you will find out women no doubt are 
totally vulnerable. But at the same time, there are also many men you'll find out where they have lost the job. And they found their voices running and coming home and also kind of throwing tantrum and there's no home peace at all. Okay. They also don't find out where do they go and they also have approached me. And to the extent, okay. they end up in a divorce last year. Okay. My husband was out of job for the last four years, right? Okay. So, so there is a lot of angles we need to understand. Mm. And the first and primary job of any, I feel, as a social activist, as a lawyer, is to reach out the person to do the counseling, to understand yeah. their mental balance, to find out whether they're in the right state of mind to take a call or not, and what external help they need in terms of whether filing a FIR or to reach out to a counseling person, or if there is shortage of money, if there are agencies coming out, or if the government, you know, lawyers are there to come forward, or court has a provision for all these things. So we need to see it from various angles. Okay. So see, the thing it. is, a uh, lot of people backed out when I come across certain cases, the backed out for the uh, legal harassment and they're dragging too long. And once they're out, then again, their family can't take it back and how they stay and all so far. So let's move to next thing about the pandemic. See, in pandemic, within one, uh, it's one week, during a pandemic, uh, within a week, there were 92,000 calls in a week. So after that, that NCW chairperson, Rekha Sharma, they have started a WhatsApp number. I'm talking about this all up in India. Then I'll come to Bangalore. So uh, they have started a WhatsApp number. In absolute lockdown, no place to go at that time. So I know a lot of work like, no, that time I was connected to Brinda. And uh, what administration was doing at that time? And uh, that too, we've been hearing what was the, what was government job at that time was distributing food for the needy and uh, migrant workers. But right. nobody talked about this pandemic. Even mm -hmm. UN has announced this as a shadow pandemic of all the times. And in lockdown, it has increased multifold. Right. So I want to talk like uh, Brinda about this. In lockdown, how you handle certain cases. So uh, in, in Bangalore. Yeah, Brinda. Uh, yes. First and foremost, uh, shelters were unwilling Closed. to reluctant to take people yeah. inside yeah because of the uh, pandemic because of the pandemic hmm. but uh, when we push them a little more saying that hmm. they are getting funding from the government and they can't hmm. say no to anybody hmm. they had their own restrictions because they said that children who are below 12 years old yeah. can stay with the parents sorry hmm. children who are below six years old can stay with the mother but anybody above six years cannot stay with the mother they have to stay in a separate shelter which is only for children six years and above now that itself is much is very traumatic because you have a family here that is already broken now saying that we want protection so they are coming out now we are saying the children must go to one side one shelter and the mother uh, mother has to go to another shelter so this was very traumatic small yeah, things i i'm sorry to break you here uh, but see when a violence happens at home when husband and wife staying in the house when violence happens then why a vulnerable woman and children has to go out? That yes. is my first question. You're right. So I was just coming to that. So when in this particular case, we tried the whole day and then I asked the same question. I said, this lady with three children has to now look for place where they can take all of them inside because their husband, the husband, the father, the perpetrator has been causing so much of trauma to them. So we took the help of the police and we said that this man has to go out. The woman is already vulnerable. She's being beaten by him. She has no source of income anyway. She's always been a housewife and she has three children. And all, the children have to know all of them above six years, of course. So the three children will go somewhere else and she will go somewhere else. Why should this man stay inside? At that time, the courts were closed, so there was, so there was nothing that you could go to court and ask for an injunction or an interim order for her to stay there. And the police said that we don't know what to do. This is his house. There's no way that you can ask him to go out. And then we had to literally force the police. Of course, we had to call from different uh, higher officials and tell them that this man is a threat to the lives of these four people. He could actually murder all of them tonight. So perceive the threat 
and remove him out from that place. And then they said, oh, but under the Domestic Violence Act, we don't have any such clause to remove him outside. He said, no, we are not talking to you about domestic violence. We're talking to you about threat to life of three people by this one person. Now that comes squarely, falls within the purview of law and order and crime. Look at it and address it like that. So this is the way we began addressing, but we also, and we, of course, uh, he went out and he said, I'm going to stay with my mother and I will never come back in here again and all of that. Now he's come back, uh, two weeks ago, he's come back, but he says that he's reformed. Now let's wait and see about it. But that showed us that the police could actually remove the perpetrator from that place, okay. not using the DV Act, but okay. utilizing other laws. And that is what is important for us. Because today, we know that any police station you go in Karnataka, they will immediately tell you anything related to domestic violence doesn't fall within the purview of the police. Talk yeah. to the protection officer. We have pro four protection officers for the whole of Karnataka, for the whole of Bangalore, over 110 police stations. Where will these yeah. four people go? Which case will they handle? Every police station has a minimum of 10 cases every day. Yeah. These were some of the problems that we had to face. Yeah. And of course, I, women are continuing to face them even today. Yeah, I, I came in like, no, I got a data from Gujarat when I attended a webinar during a lockdown. And some Supreme Court lawyer, uh, Mrs. Singh, she was telling every area, it's like a ward. Every area, there should be two uh, protection officers has to be there. And uh, this is about the protection officer. At the normally when we are doing, when we are doing announcing so many, wear your mask. Uh, th this is like, no, what authorities are doing to prevent because they have data, things are increasing. But when cases are increasing, they will build more hospitals. When these kind of cases are increasing, uh, why can't they announce, okay, no fight, no nothing doing, uh, like something like that they could have done right what do you think because some of them they approached uh, commissioner office in uh, one of the NGOs and they told why don't you do some announcement uh, in uh, certain uh, uh, this prone areas where domestic violence cases are more uh, why don't you do the announcement if anybody do like that then they will be out of this is kind of a warning so for that what has uh, our government what in Bangalore we have done like Okay, first and foremost, we need to understand that most of the structures that are prevalent just now in our country and in our state and city, the systems are very patriarchal in nature. Very, very patriarchal. Domestic violence, gender-based violence, violence against women and children actually do not come onto their forefront. They don't look at it as an issue that needs to be addressed. In fact, we were having a discussion with the government where we said that domestic violence now must have not just the women and child and the police, but also the family welfare and healthcare department. And they were like saying, why? We said, because that is an important aspect that needs to come into focus today when we talk of health as a very, very important subject where domestic violence is concerned. And like you mentioned, yes, I remember a lot of them went and had discussions uh, with the DCP in charge for central yeah. change, as well as for the helpline. And they said, we'll think about it. They don't even today consider that this is a crime. crime. It is still looked at as these things happen. You know, today women, go out and work, they have become economically independent and they are just making so much noise. I mean, domestic violence was always there. What is this noise that you are making today? You have a law. The law, the constitution provided for this law to be made and the law recognizes domestic violence. This is what we need to start telling our government. And that is why it is important that all of us in our various walks of life understand and raise our voice speak loudly and firmly that domestic violence is a crime. It's a violation of rights of that woman. It is not something that um, a woman is just coming out and talking because, you know, she's a modern woman. No, we have this complaint across. Yeah. Let's address it like that. Yeah, why is this like a threat to uh, somebody? We are not like, uh, so why can't men come forward and take care of, women and why this looked upon as a threat in the society like if everybody start uh, stand up for 
their rights and uh, uh, their sister their daughter and their wives i think this can be a altogether a different angle it will take if you they see that but if you see in other angle uh, you only wanted to go out and work right now go and face see this is again a different angle there has been a lot of thought process has to be changed right so you want to add any point yes me oh rashmita yeah. b rashmita yeah. go ahead yeah uh, uh if i understood the question that you are talking about the uh, mental condition and why women are uh, uh, i mean um, in a family when somebody is complaining that the other member of the family is not cooperating right and uh, uh, exactly my question was like i went uh, offline because i was speaking in park and i'm so sorry to say okay okay no problem see i want you to add a, uh, this thing like what kind of mindset we have to change to talk about it everywhere like a normal like other crimes i'll i'll come to the point so i have understood the question uh, yeah. see mindset is something you cannot change overnight right why i'll again give not the uh, not the movies which we are seeing on this uh, you know violence i'm giving you from my real life experience okay without naming the person again i have friends across the country in the global you know law firms and i've been dealing with a lot of cases and you know if you go about the united nations you know guidelines and all that there is this friend of mine who once called me and told that his his sister is in trouble right here in bengaluru i said okay fine what do i do you just have to talk to her and find out what is the decision she is taking i said fine i'll i'll talk to her so i dialed the number and and i have spoken to her she said i am thinking of leaving the house with my child because i really can't stay in this traumatic relationship i said why why you can't stay it has been quite for a long time i have been tolerating my in-laws in-laws means um, i have only my mother in law and my husband who is also a techie and who wants to use me the way he wants and i cannot be a puppet in their hand all the time i will oblige uh, as a i also want a family i also want a peaceful atmosphere in the fam you know in in the house i am also working coming out uh, i mean uh, coming to the home after leaving it at 9 am coming back by 8:30 30, 9 pm i just wanted to talk give food to people and help my mom in law or my cook who whatever she has cooked i have to warm it serve but there's absolutely no talk i want to talk right and i don't see anybody is coming forward to talk with me they just want me to serve and do the things right so okay. basically they have to stand up for themselves and they have to ask for help where they need it you mean to so, say that so no so she said uh, this is this is fine but why i have decided to leave the house there are reasons to that because i could see uh my my husband is hitting me whenever he wish it started if i complain to my mother in law she said no i have not seen i have not seen that when he i have not seen him hitting you okay this is one thing second thing is that they have gone to the level of uh, you know charging i mean um, kind of giving uh all the names whatever are my friends or anybody that are associating me with this person that person that that is something is very very traumatic i cannot really tolerate all this cheap talk right and i have decided because uh, at the end of the day i make sure that my daughter is not subjected to all these things if he can hit me today he can also hit my daughter at any point of time so now safety is coming into picture so because of safety because of mental peace i have to take a call and when he has she has spoken with her relatives and others everybody said don't move out of the house that is the mindset because at the end of the day it comes down to it boils down to what the society will say what the relatives will say yeah what other people will say as long as you listen to them you won't be able to take your call hmm. what your heart says i have asked her she said i wanted to go out i said just move out of the house just go out of the house she has not filed any divorce hmm. she has not she is not asking for any alimony any any maintenance because she herself is earning a lot hmm. or all she needed is the mental peace okay and the counseling part i said let me just talk to your husband 
she passed okay, me my so number. you have connected and what kind of remedy at the end she was uh, she got she's and still, she, she, she's what still is the staying, result of that case remedy is what she staying separately okay she not it filed any legal uh, divorce she has okay. not it filed any separation okay she, her husband comes and sees the baby hmm. at least talk to her this has not happened in the last uh, uh, almost 10 months from uh, she moved out exactly in last year september hmm. okay so she's alone with her parents and with her daughter she has moved from that place and she has come to where her office is located and she is i believe she is uh, living leading a good peaceful life uh, she is again welcoming the stay if her husband comes and talks to the baby starts staying she will welcome but then there is no discussion on this because her husband is silent mother in law is silent nobody is calling nobody is talking nobody is trying to find out how the baby is but she is because she is empowered in terms of finance economic okay she is sound she is educated person she could able to take that call to move out of this traumatic relationship she said once or twice which is even not right you can raise your hand but not always but not all the time that is also not okay but still to save the family i will tolerate that nonsense okay okay thank you thank you rasmita so brinda how many times like no when we see a women with a financial uh, uh, stability can do that but how many times you see like uh, you worked in both kind of societies lot of uh, people in slum as well as uh, with it crowd also you have worked so you see in there how the data will be like how you suggest them to become like empower how you do that empowerment is first and foremost remember that you are not the sole responsible superwoman to uphold the prestige and respect of your family you have one life and this life you need to live to the fullest you have accomplished so much in your life just now you are intelligent you are capable you are earning even when you say all of these things we find less than 10% of women who would make a decision like the case uh, madam rashita just now explained we just have a case with us and this woman runs a company and it's a it's a big company it's a rather big company hmm. and she still is saying that uh, what about what if my children she has children who are 12 and 14 years old and she says what when they grow older they turn around and tell me that i was a bad mother because i moved out from there the, the father doesn't want to take responsibility of the children till date 14 15 years of the marriage he has never paid their school fees whatever he earns he keeps with himself and he sends it to his family and enjoys and she's sitting with there because she gets beaten up mentally tortured and many times raped and she says my children will think i'm a bad mother and that is where we need to start telling ourselves children today a are very intelligent b they are very resilient talk to them they will understand okay. don't ever underestimate the children okay. they know so much more than you think that they know they are exposed okay. they are exposed to all of this which you and i may not have been exposed when we were younger okay. so talk to them and they will help this woman to make that decision and choice to move out you're saying you're moving out to a keep yourselves and your children safe you are not telling the father that he must not come and visit the children or the children to go and visit the father you are yes. just moving out from this husband or partner who is abusive yeah. it treats you like a worthless piece of commodity yeah that's all talk to them don't ever forget that the children love you and they will not complain and blame you any time down the year, uh, line and talk to your friends talk to people you trust exactly if somebody okay. says that basically you know, like women she, who yeah uh, she has a company who, why she cannot just walk out from there please understand we've all been conditioned okay. to yes. hold this burden so women have more emotions of doubt and help her to come out yeah more emotions and more vulnerability come in the way lot of times to go ahead and seek the help now going back to the again like no go back to the pandemic days where Uh, see, I have some data like across the world. See, Bangalore is being a uh, famous in the world IT capital. Like people here, they think like they are like uh, well and very well educated and uh, high socio economic people. Uh, 
in France within 20 days of this pandemic when cases started rising uh, government France government French government they have uh, started booking hotel rooms for victims and 20 uh, counseling centers have popped up in every grocery shop uh, for example like uh, uh, in pandemic when they are locked down with their abuser uh, even like they're scared to a call or like uh, in what kind they made a code word like if somebody comes and say like uh, code 55 or mask 99 then immediately that grocery shop person will immediately inform the uh, protection inspector like that if coming to the Spain all the pharmacies had the helplines any women come in distress that is immediately the helpline will go to uh, uh, their um, women commission same thing in italy uk as well as as bangalore being so famous and first whatever like delhi bangalore and uh, mumbai are more hit and more cases there so what our government did and whatever national commission for women they did and uh, what all the things because here uh, uh, and so the, the situation was we didn't have a facility to uh, put somebody in a shelter home. So where that lady should go at the night uh, when there is a problem, then where and Sweden, how you handle such situation? Because I know you have got many um, uh, cases involved in the mid of the night. Then how you handled one or two you can uh, tell with examples. Okay, there was one particular case where it was it was in the night around 10.30 and a passerby called us and said that she's sitting outside the house the house is locked and her husband is not allowing her to come inside of course we called for the police and uh, we thought that they would reach but around 12 30 somebody else called up saying that i just passed that side because i found rest found myself responsible for that uh, lady and she's still outside so you look at all the examples that you gave and the silicon city here had yeah. no no response mechanism no Even rescue it, facility no rescue no response facility. mechanism no facilities it just does not have that response mechanism to reach that person to intervene to take the person to a shelter it doesn't have all of it it does not coordinate even if they yeah. have a helpline they don't coordinate with so called shelters that might be there willing to take people in it yeah. doesn't coordinate with people who may be willing to do pro bono service vis-a-vis -vis counseling or legal aid or medical aid. So they work in silos, they work in compartments, whatever little work that they are doing, especially the helpline. You know, we are supposed to be having 181, which is supposedly a national yes. helpline under the Nirbhaya scheme, but that also doesn't function. Huh. So they were asked to call 100. Now, yes. whether they are a technical person or the literate and academically qualified and those who may, who may not be academically qualified, we don't want to immediately call 100 and say, my husband's beating me. Because there is that fear of 100 in us. Yes. And that has been a major uh, disappointment. And uh, I, I'm outraged. Of course, I'm outraged a bit today. So every time a case like this came up, Around 1.30 at night, I had to literally bombard, go on a tweet storm, and then we got the hoysala to support and uh, take that lady to a shelter. Of course, yeah. when the police take the lady to a shelter, they open the shelter and do take that person inside. Okay. Uh, this question goes to uh, Rasmita. Have you uh, been any part of any rescue uh, case like this you want to talk about? Uh, rescue directly I have not involved. I, ju I just coordinated the things with the police and I coordinated with, with uh, Bimochana and uh, that's all because uh, since I do not handle it directly in terms of, uh, you know, like um, offering them help and all, what I did was to inform the police and with the help of other social activists who started, uh, you know, going to the place and help the lady because there was this case from Punjab but this lady came and, uh, you know, she was married to somebody and um, all of a sudden she found that her husband is throwing her out of the house. And uh, that is when she called me. So what I did was to connect it to my friend and who connected her to the Bimochana and that is uh, finally they have taken it up. So okay. she was there in that center for two days huh. and uh, she called her father and that is how she moved in. 
okay uh, so this goes to brinda again like why this is not considered as an essential service at all brinda from from the parliament onwards you see the budget that has been allocated for children and women it's less than 1% so that shows that even the decision makers the elected representatives do not look at women and children as citizens who matter and when they, they have a not, women safety on their agenda but still no the, the agenda is women safety and that's your responsibility as women to be safe so what is the state doing what are the mechanisms doing that safety must reach me you cannot stand there and say but you know we have a law please utilize it when yeah, i what is like call, in, in what support what kind of support what they do like they, they are supposed to they are supposed to reach out so you make a call and they come to the spot and they see what is the kind of support that you want if you want shelter support then shelter support has to be extended you want medical aid then medical aid must be extended you want to register a case and fight this case through in court and you do not have the money for it then you have the state legal services authority who has to appoint uh, uh, a, give a lawyer to fight and argue these cases in court plus there is the interim orders that you must get immediately but none of these things happen now tell me the domestic violence act actually has a clause that you can get an interim order in 40 48 hours including an order of protection which court has given such an order anywhere in india even i'm sur uh, surprised uh, my next question will be uh, that uh, see dv act has come in 2005 yeah. dv act 2005 right. uh, why so late like you also know you you been working like for ages now in 2005 it came and i want to know why so late and what all it covers like uh, see first is the uh, no first before that yeah i want you to answer like as a lady who is going through this then how a bystander can help like neighbors friends how she can take help instead of going for a legal or going to the police or anything before that what all her remedies and options uh, she can uh, find you're asking me yes okay so first and foremost many times a large majority of women do not want to go to the police they don't want to go to court many times they will tell just talk to him so that he doesn't beat me which means i will continue to live here i made up my mind i will continue to hold this family together if you are a neighbor if you are a bystander if you are a friend make it a point to go and confront knock the door and say there's a lot of noise that i'm hearing from inside what is this noise now it is not like the films to say that you know ye mera ghar hai i'll do what i want no so many times we tell no many times our manelli maartta idare namge en beku like lot of people okay so uh, what we have done in the cases of such mm. nature because we found that there's no help that we can get mm. we literally told the police that you have something called public nuisance what is public nuisance any kind of loud noise perpetual noise screaming shouting yelling from your neighbor's house mm. including loud music mm. you can complain to the police yeah. they have the job to look into it under public nuisance mm. so please go and tell them that this is no longer a no mm. longer your private matter mm. if this is supposedly your private matter you should have actually soundproof your house so that no noise comes outside now the fact that i can hear the noise this is nuisance this is harassment to me and we would be calling the cops okay so Now, that is the one one way of one option yeah, one, one option. Uh, way that we can say acha at least this guy now knows that people are going to come and tell hmm. and it shouldn't be only one person because again in our neighborhoods we will see it will be only one person making a complaint hmm. let's all of us do it exactly. so that this man is held socially responsible are it is not just one person asking all these people are asking for so many years this woman used to go out and say what happened to your eye i fell down in the toilet what happened to your teeth oh i fell down in the toilet i slipped now they will all look at me as the bad person i don't want to be the bad person 
probably it will reduce. It will not stop. It might reduce. But it will also come into his head that there are people noticing. There are people concerned and there are people who are going to question. Tomorrow they might call the police. It can become a serious affair. That is what we need to start doing. No longer tell ourselves, let us go on. Hmm. Happening Our money Even a uh, lot of people, they just watch, they see, they just pass. And people so all of us want to be good, you see. But, huh. Yeah, we all want to be good people. Yeah. If I complain about you or you complain about my home, then I won't talk to you tomorrow. That's hmm. fine. Don't talk to me. Because my husband has told me not to talk to you because you complained. Mm. Give the benefit of doubt to this woman. In five days time, she'll call and thank you and say, thanks for coming and intervening at that time. I thought I would die mm. because he literally was choking me. Mm. So it doesn't matter. Let's See, not get like personally have... emotional in these things. We yeah, need to go have... out because we are learned. in a better position. They have learned to live by it. And uh, see, there was a controversy a couple of uh, months back uh, of a movie Arjun Reddy, Kabir Singh, it was some in Hindi. Uh, there were a lot of controversy and a uh, lot of discussions went on that. Uh, there it was taken it as, okay, it is hota hai. They, they will like, no, ek ghar hai hota hai. like the other person should not interfere and women has to suffer in silence and nobody will, if they are okay today, then again, they will wait for the uh, next session or whatever like that time who has to uh, rescue so so th these are the things when yeah you want to add Brinda something don't think that you can stop something that has been going on for the last 15 years by just one knock on the door you might have saved her from getting beaten five times that day that's yeah. all she's already got five slaps earlier Normally she gets 10 because I intervene, five she did not get that day. Yeah. Continuous, continuous, every day. Somewhere along the way, maybe this lady will find another option. Maybe you can show her another alternative. I don't know. But let's not say that, you know, this fellow is shameless. This woman is even more shameless. She wants to continue to live there. Please remember, if she leaves that place and comes, she has nowhere else to go. Her family has paid a lot of money and got her married. She's going to be the bad woman. She doesn't want to be a bad woman. She's not the bad woman. And all of this is in her head. Often, a woman who's left her husband and come out, men think that she's an easy lay. Yeah. She's not had sex at all, yeah? I'm going to give it to her free. She never asked you for it. So these are things that she's scared of, afraid of, because her character is going to get maligned. And that is why she will show and put up this pretense of being the good woman. And that's why we have a bigger responsibility. Okay. Before the next question to Rashmita, I just want to add this. I want you to like, no, uh, give a message to like, no, all of us who are attending this webinar as a we being how can we protect our neighbors and be a bystander? And uh, you can give a message for all of us, like what we all can do. Yeah. Uh, it is like a... There is something called social response. Yeah, this question is for Brinda. Let her finish. Then the next uh, question, DV Act, I'm coming to you. Yeah, Brinda, can you finish? Yeah, first and foremost, if you're living in an apartment complex, have at least periodic sessions to talk about domestic violence. Because it's easier when we are in RWA associations and things like that to have something like this. We need to talk about it. We need, we need to discuss it. We need our boys and girls to understand that beating up somebody in our families is not okay. It was okay a long time back because we, brought, we were brought up like that, but it is not okay today. So that is something that we can do. Two, don't be afraid to actually knock the door and ask that question or tell them that this noise is unacceptable. I will be forced to call the police. Or saying, is there some way I can help? Can I talk to you? Yeah. 
So this is something that you will have to proactively go forward because many of us are not someone who like to interfere into other people, other families' affairs. But this is violence. So it is not a family affair. It is a life of that one woman or maybe three, four women, mother, sister, and the children. So there are so many lives at stake. That's why we need to intervene. Okay. Okay, thank you. I hope like no, everybody got the message what they have to do. And uh, next question to Rasmita. Rasmita, this DV Act in 2005, isn't it too late? And what was happening before that? And what all it covers legally? Like when all options are over, then legally what all her options? Legal See, options. Uh, there's a lot of uh, changes in the law that has happened in the DV Act. Earlier it was only with the case of like, you know, even the harassment part, dowry part and everything was covered under this you know 498 ipc so here in this dv act you will find out it has taken into consideration uh, the emotional abuse the physical abuse the economic abuse of a person and uh, coming to the solution part if you want to say that you know there is a going ahead and filing the case of domestic violence because the, which was enacted in 2005 but then it started implementation was started in 2006 only and uh, sometime in november or december 2006 only so here there'll be different uh, categorically it has come under different sections that this can be like you know compensation order can be passed on the dv act section 22 you will find out that the compensation order if it is like economically the woman is not very sound and she doesn't have any support. She's not working and she's completely dependent on her husband. Then there will become, it can come under the Compensation Order Act 2021. 20, uh, and it can also go into the custody order that is actually called the 21, Section 21. Or you can say that, you know, a domestic incident report can also be prepared in this case, right? So there is too much of violence and what next step and the protection officer has to take care of all this. So here basically you'll find out the law implementation agencies, whether you call it the police or, or you call it that, that uh, the police is not filing the FIR or kind of, you know, so the, the law agencies has to be responsible and somebody, if you are talking about it is happening in the neighborhood, as Brinda ma'am has told, that, you know, periodical, you know, counseling, periodical awareness program, and women should know that these are the ways to go ahead. And if I come across somebody, I should be in a position to at least tell them that this, this is where you need to knock the door. And here your you know, request has to be honored and you, you can come out of this trauma stage. So this is basically depending upon how, how the women are taking it up and how, if they are not going to speak up. If there is a system, if there is a, if there is a community uh, where they can come out and, you know, raise their concern if suppose they say like ma'am has said okay somebody is like i don't want to go to the police station so what next is there a community body where they can come and reach you or at least in the middle of the night they can call you hey here is a man who is beating me and i i feel i am totally threatened my life is not safe and i want to go where is there any community is there any shelter where they can go and do it? okay so these are the problems you will find out that as long as we don't use it we are not familiar with it we are not able to go ahead with it will continue to suffer our, our women in our neighborhood will continue to suffer and law is something like in our society today i'll say that many people are not even aware of this law and we call it as ignorance is bliss so we consider okay i don't know because i have never studied law but today when you can search for lot many information you can always search for what are the law says and there are thousands of you know legal sites which can give you ample of knowledge on this at least you can empower yourself. If you are an educated person, if you are searching so many things, you can also empower yourself in terms of knowledge. That is very, very important. Without your knowledge, you cannot expect somebody to be there present and to take a call. You yourself can take a call. Acts are many, laws are many. Its use makes the change. So that use has to come when we push the matter. Unless we push the matter, Nobody is going to, even the FIR will take a week's time to be registered, right? So this is basically, I have to say at the end of the day. Okay, thank when you. When I talk time. about empowerment, I talk about too, you break the glass ceiling. Now I have, so what if I'm a you know, woman? So what if I'm a girl? I have the equal right to go ahead and file a complaint. I don't care what the society says. Okay. Can we bring up that change in women? Can we bring up that change in our children? 
can you take till the brother hey, this is your time go to go go to the house and make a cup of coffee to your sister it is not her job all the time yes it's not the your change mom change has to happen from there actually exactly how the upbringing has happened how the upbringing is going to happen in future do you tell that does your mother tell like okay this is your job no so what yeah, i am there handling most of the time but today i am engaged let my husband to do it that mental change should happen yes that is what the true women empowerment i'll say very very well said what it has been my advice to everybody i come across very well said rashmita right um uh, uh, brinda next question to you like all these legal remedies whereas like uh, how much practically uh, it will be useful and uh, like for example i know only about in one case i got to know something called section 17 of dv act right to reside mm-hmm. so how can you use your power in 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 case of like a need no it, all the dv act cases go only at uh, the family court the woman can go on her own and she doesn't really require a lawyer uh, she can also argue the case on her own and okay. she can ask for the right to stay okay it can be any house it can be a rented house it can be own house it can be lease house mm. and that right to stay is something that the courts normally usually okay, give it to and the, who will pay that who will pay what oh, when she stay when she decide to stay separate then how her expenses has to be like taken care of by whom the the uh, maintenance is a problem maintenance mm. is an absolute problem over 85% of cases the maintenance is rarely given they would give one month two month they will not give after that and then they go absconding yeah. they will be around they will attend work and all those things hmm. but for the police they are absconding so we normally tell women who take these cases to court we tell them you just ask for a one time settlement hmm. and sit in a house or sit in the house which may be his own house hmm. or or go to that own house and stay there with the other people other family members because there's no other way this man is going to give you that maintenance and many times we have seen women who have who have never worked in their life you know at 50 55 now mm-hmm. trying to find a job they have finished their masters and uh, they've uh, probably uh, graduates or uh, masters what job is there available for them Mm. and they find it very very difficult and the courts have not been very kind in such cases your police say your husband is absconding what can we do what do mm. you mean what can you do it is your job as the police and as the court to see that he he made a promise to the court that he will give the maintenance why is he lost if he's lost then you have to punish him then the police will come and counsel the woman and say you know we will get the man and come but he'll be in jail now once he goes to jail how will he anyway pay you and the women will anyway we are so emotional we say oh then let him be out only are let him go to jail yaar whatever he earns in jail 45 rupees a month let him give it to you let him sit there for one week let's see what happens you mean to say he has no those are the times they will hide all their uh, income whatever properties they have madam rashmita will be able to say these are people who will come to court men will come to court and they will uh, come in such shabby clothes to say that you know i don't have money i don't have anything to give huh yeah exactly I, I, there are many cases yeah there are some cases where they immediately transfer their property in their mother's name brother's name and they leave the job and also they should not they will not uh, pay anything 80% madam 80% yeah. of the cases in practical like cases that. we have yeah. come across in that the lic nominee yeah yes so uh, those are issues which our courts need to start addressing and that's okay. where we are talking about judicial activism I'll, I'll yeah I'll, so in this yeah go ahead rashmita uh, i'll i'll give an example of the right here uh, the lady is from a different state and she married and then she she is working in a good company and then she found after just after 7 days that she found her husband was already married she opened the cupboard not only the husband is married the husband is also a father of a child she opened the cupboard and she found the birth certificate and then when she questioned she was abused she was beaten so she has decided to move out of that house saying that no i can't stay and to the extent she got to know that the first wife was abandoned and she is the second wife which she was never thought she will be 
so she decided to move out because it was a lot of physical abuse and all that to the extent uh, she felt her life has been threatened so she came out of that house started staying in her brother's house went to the nearby medical hospital to get a certificate on uh, domestic violence abuse attack and all and then lodged the police complaint when she lodged the police complaint she found her husband is missing missing where he has gone he was working very vanished suddenly so she went on and then she somehow got in touch with the first wife who happens to be from a very rich family but was unable to find out uh, unable to you know put a complaint on her husband because her husband is here in this silicon city wife is somewhere else in other parts of the country and got married also so both the wives came together and then she got in touch with the other state police but when it comes to get the information from the company she was telling that if i can if i can help uh, myself by removing him from the job that will be a good you know at least i'll get satisfaction at least to some extent this man got punishment right she tried her best she tried her best in terms of she i spoke to the director of the company i spoke this is what he is doing there are cases against him the police has filed complaint and uh, but for he is there in the job but the company will never take any action unless there is a court order so she went to the other state she belongs to another state called gujarat and she there she filed a complaint the police came and they hunt the man down they arrested him that point of time also uh, he started playing hide and seek with the police the gujarat police took the help of the bangalore police they got him arrested and uh, the case is still going on and the man is behind the bar because okay. he, this is it is a case of domestic violence it is a case of you know attempt to murder hmm. a lot many charges are against him so the case is going on still going on and the, the lady is staying separately in another okay. instances also there are cases where you find out that uh, mental physical abuse continue but when it comes to giving so, mental... can you put uh, some light on like uh, child safety also as child like safety. women and child together uh, like you have come across any cases or you have done some laws like how it applies for see the child safety in terms of um, if you're talking about um, i i usually go to the you know extent of conducting a lot of child sexual abuse workshop in uh, schools and college i mean especially in school more of an awareness and huh? yeah more of a, more of an awareness because kids are not aware about uh, how do they take care of themselves uh, when uh, something happens with them in terms of you know either you talk talk it in terms of an inappropriate touch or in terms of kind of you know there are smaller children also being sexually abused uh we had cases of many schools coming to the front so here basically my approach is to make sure that if it is a case after a thorough investigation and all first of all the you know it is very important to offer the counseling to that particular family and because they they underwent so much of traumatic state because when a child is involved and this is such a sensitive matter and at the same time also it is important for the children to know because in our time also you are like going freely here and there and you know but, but today if you compare the lot of cases are happening every part of the country and people are people are also understanding that okay this is something but here uh, i should go ahead but also they are not coming forward even if their own children and they're telling okay why do i go to report because you know kal ko mere ko sunna padega mere ko mere ko you know i feel so embarrassed okay they will point out to my family okay my daughter was abused so i will rather take help in terms of be careful but not reporting the matter and that is that is so but there is that is also a case where 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 a girl who was who was not very minor in terms i mean of course below the age of 18 but uh, not 8 year right but at least you know 13 14 years old and she was suddenly complained that you know because she has been abused in the family and she had suddenly dialed the number 1098 and lot many calls goes to that number as a child helpline so she got the help from the ngo and then that is when the parents are called to the police station because there is a complaint against the parents where the child was abused inside the house and that is when the child was taken care by the ngo 
in coordination with the police and i got a call to help the family because their child is missing but then the child was actually not missing the child was okay. already there in the shelter home okay because the so, child was in a position to take a call yeah. after going through this traumatic stage for so many years by her own parents mm. there is a difference between are tum ladki ho kya karoge we will give so she felt that dif- difference my okay. parents are taking more care of my brother not me so that difference has actually angered her and okay. that is when she went ahead to file a complaint okay uh, brinda as like no problems are more or less same the social stigmas are same patriarchal this thing is same as like they are growing up only there there is like inequality uh, it is there in the mind so you can share some of the like you no know, child safety measures what you come across and as you have like this makkala sahayavani adu henge kelsa madutte matte illi jana yaradru makkalige nodidre avaru henge save madabodu see first and foremost if you find that there is a child in any you, kind you would you answer in uh, kannada also ah kannada okay yaa yaa yaradru maguna thaa nodidre ಕಷ್ಟದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ತಾಪತ್ರದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಹ್ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಹಿಂಸೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಆಗಬಹುದು ತಾವು ಹತ್ತು ತೊಂಬತ್ತ್ ಎಂಟಿಗೆ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬಹುದು ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಸಹಾಯವಾಗಿ ಅದು ಇಡೀ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಅವ್ರು ಬಂದು ಆ ಕೇಸ್ ನ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಬಂದು ಅಹ್ ಎರಡನೇದು ಅಕಸ್ಮಾತ್ ನೀವು ನೋಡಿದೀರಾ ಲೈಂಗಿಕ ಶೋಷಣೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಮೇಲೆ ಕಾನೂನು ಇವತ್ತು ಪಾಕ್ಸೊ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಕಾನೂನು ಇದೆ ಆ ಕಾನೂನು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನಾನು ನೋಡಿದೀನಿ ಅವ್ರ ಯಾರಿಬ್ರು ಯಾರು ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಮಗು ಯಾರು ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾರ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ತೊಂದರೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಶೋಷಣೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಯಾರು ನನ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಕಡೆ ನಿಂತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅದನ್ನ ನಾನು ನೋಡಿದೀನಿ ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಕಾನೂನ್ ಅವರು ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಾನು ಈ ಒಂದು ವಿಷಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಲೇಬೇಕು ಇದು ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ಸುದ್ದಿ ಕೊಡ್ಲೇಬೇಕು ಈ ಕಾನೂನು ಅಡಿದಲ್ಲಿ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವರು ನಿಮಗೆ ಕೇಳಂಕಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ನೀನ್ ಯಾರು ನೀನ್ ಯಾಕೆ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ಯಾ ನಿನ್ ಫೋನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಏನು ನಿನ್ ಆಧಾರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಏನು ಕೇಳಕ್ಕೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಏನು ಅಧಿಕಾರ ಇಲ್ಲ ತಾವು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ತಾವು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ನ ಅದು ತಗೋಬೇಕು ಎಲ್ಲಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅದು ಒಂದು ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ನ ಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕಲ್ವಾ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವ್ರು ಬರ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿರೋದು ಹೌದು ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ಅದು ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅವರು ಗಮನ ತಗೊಂಡು ಕೇಸ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಅವರು ಮಾಡ್ಲೇಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತೆ ಪಾಕ್ಸು ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಹೇಳುವಾಗ ಸುಮಾರ್ ಸತಿ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಹೋಮ್ಸ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಇಂತ ಒಂದು ಶೋಷಣೆ ಆಗಬಹುದು ಆ ಶೋಷಣೆ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಗಮನಗೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ರೆ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಯ್ಯೋ ನನ್ನ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಕರೀತಾರೆ ನಾಳೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟ ಮೇಲೆ ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನ ತಿರ್ಗ ತಿರ್ಗ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಕರೀಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವರು ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿಗೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ತನಿಖೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವರು ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ನ ಅವರು ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಯಾರೋ ಒಬ್ರು ಬೃಂದ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಪ್ಪ ಈ ಜಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂತ ಇಂತ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಹೋಗಿ ವಿಚಾರಣೆ ಮಾಡಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಹಿತಿ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಈಗ ನಾವು ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಬೃಂದ ನಾಲೆ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಬನ್ನಿ ನನ್ನ ಕರೀಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅವಶ್ಯಕತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾನೂನು ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಭಯ ಪಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅಕಸ್ಮಾತ್ ಅವ್ರು ಜೋರ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾನು ಕೊಡಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟ ಪಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಮೈ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೈ ನೇಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೈ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಗೀತಾ ಇಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಗ್ನೆಂಟ್ ಎಚ್ ಐ ವಿ ಏಡ್ ಏಡ್ಸ್ ಲೇಡಿ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸಫ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎಚ್ ಐ ವಿ ಏಡ್ was sitting at a bus stop and she wanted to go to a shelter during the pandemic in april hmm. when i called the helpline the 181 hmm. helpline hmm. hmm. she took over 3 minutes the police at the other end saying hmm. tell me what is your name and i told her my name is indira gandhi hmm. why what would my name do i'm hmm. giving you information
civil law as well as criminal they can go but whereas in emotional there is no own there you cannot file a criminal complaint but there are a lot of mental yeah. harassment in that yeah. case what are the option for a lady like as till now we know as a normal uh, citizens as like go to yeah can you hear me can you hear me yeah okay so as a normal people we know we can uh, go to counseling right yes yeah. see uh -huh. the, the as i informed earlier also hmm. this lady can make a complaint to hmm. the court directly hmm. then the court will ask that the protection officer or a concerned officer take her statement down hmm. and hmm. this then the court can also refer her to a counselor or even a psychiatrist or a psychologist yeah those will be notes that will be produced in court and the court takes cognizance of it hmm. we have had a couple of cases where hmm. the magistrate has looked at it and said that okay she has gone through four or five sittings with the psychologist with the hmm. counselor and this is what i hear from yeah. i read hmm. of what has been inferred by this professional that she has been going through this kind of trauma this is where she is she is very scared because of a b c d and this can be must be considered as emotional violence psychological violence okay okay thank you binda that can rashmi i think it's the time now for uh, taking some of the questions from the audience anybody have questions you can either message i can see one question here uh, how much uh, how much they can demand as one time settlement a minimum it depends on what there is some question uh, who want to answer you can answer rashita is answering are you asking me see the one time settlement as as vrindavan has already told settlement is a big big problem you can say because uh, i'll tell you the example of a very well to do family where the wife went ahead asking the husband for the settlement and uh, kind of you know maintenance the court directed the husband to just to give 10000 where the earning of the husband is in crores so it is it is very difficult to find out uh, from the judge himself like uh, after going through all the papers the salary slips and uh, what are the expenses what are the responsibility in the family and the custody of the children what if the wife is working based on that it is going to be calculated there is also a case of a very uh, big industrialist who was uh, staying in um, you know his wife was in mumbai and he was staying in new york and the parents were having a lot of business and uh, kind of you know 300 crore 400 crores of you know um, business growth you can say i mean revenue generation and the wife charged because she belongs to a, uh, a political family she charged around 15 crores but husband said no i can only give you one crore not that much so the calculation part depends a lot on many aspects sometimes the husband will also come into the point saying that uh, these are the why can't they adjust in minimum because the money that i have is uh, maybe tomorrow i will lose my job and i cannot really give the total amount and uh, i cannot give maximum i can only you know fulfill the necessary uh, requirements of my children and my you know why because we have still not got the divorce is still my wife but this is how the calculation is happening so it is very pathetic you to to be very honest you'll find out and um, uh, in three of the cases uh, it was really very unsatisfied to see that you know Mm, the majority of the cases have lost the ground in terms of getting good compensation from the you know we still have to file out in higher courts and find out okay how how it can be actually taken care of because there is a need and the court is giving this order so we need to again appeal it again and find out another ground for that so that is that is how it is right now yes uh the uh complementing to that question see the court also has a provision to appoint a counsel to find out what kind of assets 
what kind of stocks that this man has, what kind of savings this person has, what are the assets and all of it together, how much is he worth? So yeah. it, is, it is dependent on this lawyer to see what are the various laws that can be employed in that case. Exactly. Because very many times, with due respect to Madam Rashita, we also have lawyers who have their own thought processes exactly, to say, exactly. Are, you got to... one crore, you're not happy, what a greedy woman you are. Exactly. So as a woman, know what your rights are. Yes. Yeah. Talk to five different advocates and lawyers and find out that these things can be employed. We have, we got one case that got settled recently. No, at the same time, I'm sorry to interrupt, at the same time, what happens, when uh, this lady who was actually before approaching me and my friend went ahead with another lawyer and she she came up with uh, i asked the lawyer that okay if in order to transfer the case of course she has you have to give me a noc so that the case can be transferred to another lawyer because we found you not very competent to deal with this case and this is what the compensation this is what the salary figure of her husband and this is what the compensation because he is living in a very big flat, uh, paying a rent of 35,000 and this house can it be maintained, right? So this lawyer is not competent enough to find out or question and neither, and then to appoint the other lawyer also, because things are not really happening, that other lawyer is also asking money and that is where the, you know, compromise thing, uh, state of this woman is coming into picture. And if you if you want to pursue the matter, you have to again throw money to another lawyer. And that is where you will find out these women are totally helpless because they don't have a job. Whatever savings are there, they're taking and giving and going ahead. There is no government help coming. There is no other you know, financial benefit is coming. They're stuck in between. And this is such a dilemma. This is such a pathetic state for a woman. As you uh, say, talk yes, to again, with due respect lawyers. to you, madam. Uh, with due respect to you, I think we, we are more on the activist side. We have come across every case like this. Yeah. And we find that, that there is an incompetent lawyer. Yeah. And the lawyer is also having conversations with the husband's lawyer. Exactly. You know, coming to some kind of a yes. settlement. It's... And that settlement need not be beneficial to the woman. Exactly. We've confronted the lawyers. Like we have said that we will be taking this matter up yeah. directly. Because the family court allows the woman to speak on her behalf. Exactly. You don't need a lawyer. You may not have the lawyer that language. It is that, okay. That is, that, that the is magistrates are willing to listen to you however you speak. Yes. Whatever you want to say. Because we have, with everything that I criticize about, I also want to tell you that there are plenty of sensitive magistrates. Magistrates who, who apply their mind every case. They don't blindly go ahead and do these things. One case where we asked was this lady was married for about three years, three and a half years. She's about 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And that man is 35 years old. And uh, she said that she wants a compensation, a maintenance of two lakhs every month, no children. And the other lawyer said, what is the need for her to ask for two lakhs and this and that. Her lawyer was a very bright man. And he came and said that she's lived a lifestyle which this man fell in love with her and said that this is the lifestyle I will give you. Now she's got used to that lifestyle. You have to give her the two lakh compensation or you give her the five crore uh, uh, one time uh, compensation uh, with a flat, right. with one flat in some place. The flat itself was another cost of about two crores. The case went back and forth, back and forth. Of course, the opposition, the husband's lawyer came to but say... At the end of the day, the compensation depends on his capability, right? Capability and to convince that that man can give it. And this woman has a right to take it. Not be shy, ashamed and say that, look at her, how she's, you know, taking this money. She's squeezing him out of that money that he has. She's your wife. She married you for A, B, C, D reason, thinking she's going to spend uh, the rest of her life and she will die also in this marriage. And now she's gone out. There is a lot of loss for her. We don't know. She may marry later on. She may not marry. Now, that is something that has to come. And I think it is also time for us to start telling that if you find lawyers who come into these kind of things, we can report it to the magistrate. That is also a possibility. Okay. Which we okay. have done. 
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वृंदा रश्मिता फॉर योर टाइम सो वी रियली नीड एज अ सिटीजन एज इन अ सोसाइटी वी रियली नीड अ प्लेटफॉर्म एज बी एन पी फ्रॉम बी एन पी वी आर थिंकिंग ऑफ गिविंग अ प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ऑल द पीपल हु थिंक दे नो दे नीड दे कैन कम एंड शेयर दर प्रॉब्लम एंड वी कैन जस्ट डाइवर्ट देम टू द राइट प्लेस देर साइलेंस दे डोंट हैव टू सफर बट देर साइलेंस विल बी हर्ड समवेयर so yeah that, that is, is that is and, that is, yeah that is that is something very badly needed in the society yeah. when we are talking about political parties when we are talking about a lot many things but politicians also can play a vital role if there is a platform to complain if their complaints are heard and uh, you know it can be addressed in a proper manner i think that will be one of the best uh, you know way to solve many of the yes yeah, we are thinking about the platform where like anybody who is going to violence be it a man women kid whatever like so we we will provide them a platform where we are like thinking on it we can work towards it and uh, as like no all of us we see hear this and all like uh, uh, we do lot of uh, social service but like no charity begins at home so exactly. first of home we have to make a safe and it is every man every man and women everybody's problem it is and everybody's responsibilities right uh, with that i'll finish and i'll thank again for brinda and rasmita to join and uh, thank you so much shrikant and who are attending for giving me the opportunity to like no talk to these wonderful ladies um so we'll finish the session thank you thank, thank you all thank you